Hello, you're watching the Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Probe shows widespread racism in US Police Department. Capital control law sparks protests in Lebanon. South African mine workers continue wage strike. And Colombia's indigenous leaders march to Bogota. We begin with the United States. A major investigation has shown an illegal pattern of racial discrimination in the Minneapolis Police Department, or the MPD. The probe was launched by the Minnesota Department of Human Rights after the police murder of George Floyd in 2020. Investigators reviewed over 700 hours of body camera footage and almost 480,000 pages of documents. This included 10 years of data on arrests, searches, traffic stops, use of force, and training. They found that the MPD officers use disproportionate and higher rates of more severe force against black people. 63% of all incidents of use of force between 2010 and 2020 were against black people. Of the 14 people killed by Minneapolis in 10 years, 13 were black or indigenous. Black people were also twice as likely to be subjected to neck restraints. Black people were also disproportionately issued citations for disorderly conduct or obstruction of legal process. This began to be referred to as the quote-unquote black tax by the local community. Police officers also used secret and even unauthorized social media accounts to surveil black people and organizations. Officers also consistently used racist and misogynistic language and slurs. The MPD also does not have a meaningful independent review process to ensure accountability. The MPD reinforced a quote-unquote warrior mindset despite banning this kind of paramilitary training in 2019. The report argues that city and department officials failed to act with the necessary urgency, coordination and intentionality to address these issues. The MPD is also under investigation by the Federal Justice Department. We now take a look at Lebanon, which has witnessed a series of protests against proposed capital control law. The legislation was introduced after the caretaker government held talks with the International Monetary Fund. It is part of a so-called reform process in exchange for an agreement with the institution. The IMF has agreed to provide Lebanon with $3 billion in special drawing rights for nearly four years. However, it must implement a set of eight reforms. This includes capital control, which is being seen as a way for banks to recover an estimated $69 billion lost in recent years. The law will reportedly remove protections for individual deposits in the banks. Hundreds of people gathered in Beirut on April 25th to reject the law. It could also not be discussed in Parliament on Tuesday due to a lack of quorum after several legislators abstained. People fear that the law will harm small depositors who form 80% of the country's depositors. Capital control will give banks more powers, including freezing deposits for an indefinite period. People might also be forced to withdraw money in the local currency instead of dollars. Bankers and the government will not be accountable for these actions. Lebanese banks have already imposed limits on withdrawal and transfers due to the ongoing economic crisis. The national currency has lost 90% of its value and 75% of the population is living below the poverty line. Other reforms, including this year's budget proposed by the IMF, have been delayed until after the national elections. Workers at the Sibanye Stillwater gold mines in South Africa are about to enter their third month on strike. Workers downed tools on March 9th after rejecting five wage offers from the company. The strike has been organized by the National Union of Mine Workers and the Association of Mine Workers and Construction Union. The central demand of the strike is a wage increase of 1,000 rand or $69 for surface and underground workers. Unions are also demanding a 6% increase for artisans, miners and officials. Sibanye Stillwater is one of the world's biggest mining companies, employing over 30,000 people in South Africa alone. 
On April 22nd, the company announced that it had tabled a final settlement offer. Under this, the employees would receive an increase of 850 rand per year for three years. This would include a 50 rand annual increase in the living out allowance. Meanwhile, miners, artisans and officials were offered a 5% increase over three years. The offer was decisively rejected by the workers. Sibanye Stillwater's refusal to give workers a living wage is all the more disturbing given that its CEO, Neil Fronman, was paid 300 million rand in 2020 alone. Unions have accused him of refusing to meet workers and destroying mining jobs in South Africa. Fronman reportedly bought out gold and platinum operations and put them in care and maintenance. This led to massive retrenchments. And for our final story, 1,500 indigenous and social leaders arrived in the Colombian capital of Bogota this week. Humanitarian caravans were launched from several cities on April 24th, including Tulua, Cajamarca and Arauca. It was organized under the banner Humanitarian Emergency for Life and the Defense of Territories. Over 100 organizations participated in the action to expose the violence and humanitarian crisis in different territories. The caravans arrived at the Pedagogical University in the capital on April 27th. Participants have denounced the quote-unquote policy of annihilation and extermination of social processes at the national level. They have also condemned the persecution of those who took to the streets against the government. Colombia witnessed severe rights abuses and police violence during the national strike uprising in 2021. Activists have also argued that there has been a marked increase in the killings of social leaders and signatories of the 2016 peace process. According to the non-profit Indepas, at least 60 social leaders have been killed in 2022 so far. 18 former members of the demobilized Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia have also been murdered. According to the Regional Indigenous Council of Cauca, the gathering in Bogota is also seeking to propose a comprehensive peace proposal. This would be implemented by the new government, which is set to take office later this year. They are also seeking the prohibition of fracking, arguing that it has impacted the social, economic, cultural and territorial integrity of Colombia. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.